So this is the object, uh, the the project that I have. I will simply make a copy of it, right? Copy and paste, and uh, I will rename it, right? I will rename it and say that this is an an object pool. object pool uh, demo okay so done that uh, and uh, go back to start with my NetBeans I just start NetBeans uh, and uh, just basically go to projects um, and since I'm no longer using the singleton I don't want to confuse myself so I'm just going to close it uh, to, 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 to close this project and basically go file uh, open project and navigate to my uh, location which is over here and this is object pool and we'll say open and hopefully it opens uh, it's still internally called a singleton demo so I'm going to rename it um, just basically say rename and say again object pool object pool so that's what I recommend that you do when you uh, clone your projects and uh, you know continue using them uh, the uh, folder has been already renamed so I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that I'm just going to say rename my project um, and then I'll examine the packages that I have there to to rename if there are any so let me close the start window and go to my, go back to my project and I see that there's a singleton demo project which I'm uh, uh, package which I'm also going to rename so this time we're going to go through a refactor and say rename right there. So I'm just going to say object pool, object pool demo. This is fine. Uh, refactor. So everything gets refactored, um, and uh, we still have obviously the main class, right? Which which does the work with the singleton, and we still have the singleton. Uh, class over here. So the first uh, uh, the first uh, step uh, is going to be that instead of de declaring this um, uh, reusable pool or whatever we're going to name this this object uh, or this class, uh, uh, instead of making it a standalone class, we're going to make it a subclass of a singleton because if you think about it the rest of the application should be able to find to locate this object uh, from any place um, and there should be only one instance of it right so in itself in itself the reusable pool is actually a singleton right in other words uh, if uh, if if we want to uh, like use UML notation or, or parts of this UML notation is that we want to have this singleton class and this uh, and this uh, uh, reusable pool should be deriving from it should be uh, essentially should be using singleton as its super class all right so let's give it a try uh, we're gonna go to our package and we're gonna say new right and say new um, uh, new Java class and uh, let's name it reusable uh, pool and I'm making this choice because I think my uh, my UML diagram names this uh, object pool a reusable pool okay uh, so uh, uh, we're gonna name it reusable pool say finish right and we're going to name this class, uh, I'm sorry, not name this class, but rather we're going to make sure that it's a uh, subclass of a singleton, right? So we say extends, extends uh, singleton. So singleton will already have, so it, it extends the singleton. Let's, let's 
put them side by side just to see what, what's going to happen here. Well, first of all, uh, a singleton only has uh, uh, essentially uh, publicly available get instance method, and uh, that is uh, that is fine, right? So we're going to uh, uh, use this uh, uh, use this idea of uh, getting a singleton instance uh, right there. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, so, uh, likewise, we want to, uh, you know, we want to be able to, uh, the only thing that I'm noticing here is that perhaps, perhaps extending it would be uh, somewhat of an overkill in the design because I, I need to be able to uh, create, uh, uh, create a new, uh, new reusable pool over here. So. Now that I'm thinking about it, I, I, I think that instead of extending it, I'll just uh, basically copy and paste the implementation of a singleton over here and simply dispose of a singleton. Basically, uh, having this already designed uh, makes it possible to simply take the, the guts of the singleton and essentially copy and paste in this reusable pool and say, let's implement this this reusable uh, pool as a singleton, and that's just what I'm going to do. So this is going to be a reusable pool, a reusable pool, uh, and when we say new reusable pool, uh, this will definitely uh, behave exactly as uh, uh, as a singleton, right? Because so, we have the get instance, we have protected constructor, we have static data member that initially is set to null, and I can now close the singleton. Uh, I can still keep 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 uh, its its class in my um, in my project, but now uh, now I have basically an object which I can which I can uh, develop fully into what it's supposed to be. So it will will have a collection of re reusables. Uh, and uh, this will be a growing pool of some useful uh, some useful objects in the system. Uh, and I think that uh, what's possible for me to do, I need to decide what type of uh, uh, class do I need to store as a reusable inside my reusable pool. And what I'm thinking right now is that I'm going to go to my package and say a new Java class. Uh, and since this uh, semester we're working on this uh, simulation project which involves visitors uh, in the building environment, uh, I'm going to say reusable, reusable visitor, reusable uh, visitor. I could have named, uh, only just simply named it a visitor uh, class, uh, and that's what most likely I would do. I'm just using the uh, reusable uh, in its name right now, simply to uh, emphasize the fact that this is to demonstrate the reusable pool pattern. But in reality, it could be just named visitor instead of reusable visitor, right? But that's just going to be the subject, the object kept inside the pool. And, uh, uh, you know, since for the lack of better example, right now I'm just going to say that uh, I'm going to uh, I use this idea of a reusable visitor, which is right now just an empty class uh, to, uh, uh, to, to, to store it in, uh, uh, you know, inside my reusable pool. So this way I have reusable visitor, so this way of course I can say, okay, uh, what are my data attributes? Okay, and in our data attributes, what's going to happen is that we're going to have apparently a flexible uh, array list, array list, right, of reusable visitors, right, and uh, it's going to be called reusables. Okay, and uh, it's going to be uh, so we're just going to say this is a private, right, uh, private. Uh, uh, private data attribute. So of course I will use my my fix imports. Um, oh, I misspelled this. That's why fix imports didn't work. Uh, so, but now uh, it worked. Okay, great. Uh, 
right? So I have essentially array list of reusable visitors, and it, that's uh, what I try to uh, visualize here. This is my array list right here. So this is the array list of reusables, um, and that's part of my, you know, part of my design over there. Okay. So uh, so again, so this is this is the collection of reusables. Something that I want to maintain uh, as a subject of that, you know, of that collection. So get instance we already have because it's 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 pretty pretty straightforward. We we already kind of stole the idea from last week's idea of uh, singleton that get instance safely gets you an instance of the class, um, and uh, it gets created only. In, the, uh, in under condition that the actual instance right here is still null. Otherwise, it's just going to you know re recycle and reuse uh, uh, a reference to already existing object. So then the diagram here suggests that we need to have uh, acquire reusable, release reusable, and set maximum pool size. So we can we can have examples of these methods uh, that we want to uh, implement. 